All right, <clears throat> so let's just review calculating the centroid so that we can find the neutral axis, <clears throat> and then we'll calculate the I, the area and moment of inertia about that neutral axis. All right, so centroid, first for a U-beam or something like this, uh, we've got two, uh, two methods. Either think of this as one solid uh, rectangle minus that rectangle right there, or think of this as three separate rectangles, maybe one, two, three. So that's what I think I'm going to do. One, two, three. And I know that to find the Y bar, I would take each individual Y centroid times its individual area divided by the total area right here. So my Y bar <coughs> would be, let's start with um, shape one. So the Y for shape one would be a hundred from the bottom. So let's measure from the bottom. Measure from bottom. You can choose how you want to measure this uh, <coughs> to be so you can measure it from the top or the bottom. I'm going to measure from the bottom. So uh, this is the centroid of this would be right here 100 from the bottom uh, times its area. It's a rectangle just base times height. Now this one number two where is its centroid? Uh, let's let's look at this. Can you see this? This would the centroid right here would be um, at what 190, right? 190 from the bottom, uh, and its base times height right there, <coughs> plus this other one. And you know what? This other one is exactly the same as that one, so let's multiply it times 2. I'm not squaring that, I'm just multiplying this times 2, because it's the same y tilde, the same area, divided by the total area. So 15 by 200 plus 250 by 20, and actually we've got two of those areas right there. So, make sure this makes sense. I've got that my y tilde is 140.9, and I measured from the bottom. <clears throat> from the bottom. And does that make sense that these, the neutral axis, the centroid, would be s right about there? Right about there. This isn't exactly true, but there should be the same area above and below, right? So make sure that your neutral axis, um, not exactly, but there's area above and below your neutral axis. So so there's my neutral axis right there, 140.9 from the bottom. So let's calculate the I, the area moment of inertia. <coughs> well, the area moment of inertia of a composite body, I would just sum up each, each rectangles. I'm, I'm looking at this as three rectangles. I could sum up each rectangles um, I and just add those three I's together. Uh, now, if you look in the uh, back of the book or in your formula sheet, you know that the I for a rectangle, so just kind of a side note, I for a rectangle, uh, and we're talking about the I about a neutral x-axis, <coughs> would be 1 12th bh cubed, but that is about the rectangle's centroid. That is about the rectangle's centroid. We want the I about the whole area's centroid. All right, so do you remember the parallel axis theorem? Parallel axis theorem says that we would take the I that we're given and we'll add AD squared to get the I not about the, so we're given the I, 1 12th BH cubed, but that's about the rectangle centroid, but we need to move it to <coughs> the centroid of the, the cross-section area, the 140.9 millimeters. So for each of these rectangles, we're going to take the I, the 1 12th BH cubed, but then add a D squared. So let's see how that uh, works. All right, so for shape number one, the I of a rectangle <coughs> is 1 12th, B H cubed, but that would be the I about that axis right there. We want the I about the neutral axis, so we need to move it an A, so it's a 15 by 200. All right, so we need to move it A 
d squared. What is that d? d is the distance that we need to move that line from here to here. It's perpendicular distance from the centroid to the point that you're interested, to the line you're interested in. All right, let's think about this. <coughs> this, 112 bh cubed, is at 100 from the bottom, right? It is at the centroid of its area, which is 100 from the bottom. We need to go 140.9 from the bottom, so we need to move it a 40.9 squared, and then that would be the I from that shape number one. Okay, is this coming back to you, hopefully? Now, shape number two, 112. It's base, 250. It's height, 20 cubed. All right, but that would be the I about this line right there, this centroid line right there. This line right here is 190 from the bottom. We need to move it down here to 140.9 from the bottom. Uh, so we need to move it an A, 250 by 20. And now the hard part, that D. What is that D? We need to move from 90 to 140.9. That would be 49.1. <coughs> it didn't really matter positive or negative whether I'm moving it up or down because I'm squaring it. You know, you could say I'm moving it down 49.1, but we're squaring it, so it doesn't matter. So that would be the area from the, the contribution of the moment of inertia from that second shape. The third shape, we could do it, but it would be exactly this again. So I'm going to multiply that times 2. Multiply that times 2. So <clears throat> add those up. I would get the I. All right, so we're going to say I X <coughs> because my neutral axis is an X line. Does that make sense? Your neutral axis is a horizontal line, an X line. So I X would be just, just the, <coughs> the <coughs> these numbers right here. If I left these in um, millimeters, or let's just keep up with my units, it would help me. To if I forgot a cube or forgot a squared, uh, this is millimeters to the fourth. This is millimeters to the fourth, but it'd be a very large number, 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. So <coughs> y'all know how I like newtons per millimeter squared is equal to MPA. So generally, I think, I think I'm keeping mine in millimeters to the fourth. Uh, but if you had changed this before or after the fact to meters to the fourth, you could probably kind of guess this. Uh, we'd be a very, very, very small meters to the fourth, right? Either very, very large millimeters to the fourth <coughs> or very small. It'd be 42 point, whoops, 42 point. Okay, I think I just this wrote right here, 42.3 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th, or 42.3 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, meters to the 4th, right here. All right, and then, we're not going to do this, but then that is the I that we could use to find the stress uh, right there, the MY over I. Okay.